first met, I was intimidated by you. You were? And when we made love, I held back. You did? Who would now? Now that I've opened up and I've told you the truth about myself, I just want to be completely free to do any and everything you want me to. Oh, God. I'll see you tomorrow. Yes. Lennox and 110. Yes. <laughs> I'll be there. You bet. Richie, I think I'm falling in love with you. Yeah, give me Holly Court, uh, 55377. Seven. Hello, it's Daddy. Hey, darling, put Mommy on the phone. Yeah, Barbara, it's Richie. Yeah, look it, I ain't never coming home no more. Take it easy. Yeah. All right, so do you remember that that, that scene from Harlem Light? That's that scene... Not Oh, oh my god. Me. Are you serious? Oh. I forgot that he said that. Oh, I'm so funny. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I I thought I memorized the movie and I'm just like, okay, this is crazy. That was something that slipped past me until I heard it again and it all came back and then the the 90s the fun and excitement of the night. Was it the 90s? I think it was. The early 90s? I'm not sure. Yeah. But my thing is, yeah, is when she funny. turned that's around, she said, so y'all only heard the, the clip. So what I'm going to do is in our um, fan page group, I'll actually post the video so you could actually see it. But what she does, when she turns around and say, I love you, that tear that rolls down his, oh yeah, my God. That was just so was special. Tear. I love that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> then he thought about his life for all of like 10 seconds. He was like, hey, yeah, get your mom on the phone. Hey, yeah, yeah, look it. I ain't never coming back. <laughs> <laughs> oh us, that is what that mystical, magical punani will do to you. So, and I'm sure I that's mean, can done I before eat- by other men out there. I- I'm selling the house on Monday, Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> but don't we call have me I'll call you my lawyers will call you don't call me I don't have any but kids have I forgot kids. all about them. I mean I don't know like, no, the kids are out of my mind like we're going we're moving to Mexico your kids. <laughs> I ain't have nothing to do with me I don't know what to tell you but I mean you can you really blame Bill if that was the situation you, you can't blame him I mean never felt anything like that so he married mm-hmm. some girl after like two days Anyways, during their month-long marriage, other people said that the Nelsons were, like, really quiet and mysterious. So I guess they didn't talk about their relationships much. Maybe they weren't seen out together much, but they just said really quiet and mysterious. They ended up having their honeymoon at a ranch that Bill and his brother owned in Texas. So it's not like they really went anywhere, you know, crazy. They just had it at a ranch. And then they moved into Bill's Costa Mesa California apartment. Um, and this is where Omaima claimed that Bill started getting violent. He's, she says, and I have to point out, this is her saying this. She says that he started getting physically and sexually abusive towards her. So close to Thanksgiving. So again, remember they only just got together in October, got October, got married in October. And so now it's moving closer to Thanksgiving and remember, Bill had another woman. So I guess from this other woman, he had children. So he was trying to invite one of his daughters over for Thanksgiving dinner. Um, and he told her, so this comes from his, his daughter, her account. He told her that the marriage with Omaima was going so extremely well and he was so happy. But his daughter turned him down, which, I mean, uh, duh, you cheated on this B-I-T-C-H 
you know, you cheated on my mom with this B-I-T-C-H. I don't want to be there with you. I mean, I guess I still love you as my dad. I'm still trying to get through those feelings. It's literally only been a month. I don't want to be over there for Thanksgiving. Like, you know, but kudos to you, I guess, dad. I don't know. <laughs> but um, so his daughter was like, no. But Omaima still had like her little heart set on a small get together. So she just decided to move forward with the Thanksgiving dinner with just Bill and her. So fast forward now on Sunday, December 1st, 1991. So this is what a month later, Jose. Okay. I might say this last name wrong. Okay. So let's say Jose Esquivel was just going about his day. So he was just, you know, walking around, probably just making a sandwich, scratching his butt, about to watch cops on TV or whatever. Yeah. And then he heard some, <laughs> he's heard some frantic knocking on the door. Well, 91, it wouldn't have been reruns, right? 91, cops was live at that time. That's right. Wasn't it? Mm-hmm. So anyways, he heard some frantic knocking on his door. So, you know, he's like, what the hell's going on? And he goes, you know, I'm coming, wait. He walks over, opens the door and sees his ex-girlfriend. From last year in front of him, like, what the, f- uh, yeah, can I help you? So Omaima told Jose that her husband had attacked her and raped her. And, you know, because he did that, she'd been forced to kill him in self-defense. So then she was like, hey, come, come over here, which somebody just told me to kill somebody and said, come over here. I'd be like, uh, oh, no, no, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, Not you know, happening. she said. She said, come over here. And she took him over to Bill, to Bill's red 1975 Corvette and showed him some trash bags that were in there. And she was like, um, can you please, please, Jose, please. I know we broke up and I probably stole money from you. There's a good chance that I had a knife on you. So I robbed you before I left you. And then I was like, you know, this isn't working out for me. Uh, And if you don't give me that money on your countertop, I'm going to stab you in your groin. I know we ended things badly, but can you please help me get rid of this body? And if you help me get rid of this body, I'll give you $75,000 cash and two motorcycles. And really great sex afterwards. Yeah. You know how that goes. (laughs) And now Jose, (laughs) knowing that this bitch was crazy. Yeah. He calmed her down and was like, um. You go to your apartment and you wait right there. I'll be right over. So then she was like, okay, thank you so much. And so when she left, he was like, 911. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Help. Yeah. So, yeah, so the police. Day. So the police went over to Amima's house to say they got an anonymous call that body parts were reported in her husband's car. So they were like, you know, we're here to just check that out. We got an anonymous call. Somebody told us that, you know, your husband's 97 Corvette has trash bags with body with body parts stored in it. So I know this can be very, you know, hard on you, but let's just go ahead and check the bags. So they held her. Just, you know, just sit right there. Let me look in the car. And so they went through the bags in the car and they couldn't identify the remains because the body was so very dismembered. And they also couldn't determine the cause of death. So the cops detained her for questioning. And this ended up lasting all of Sunday night. So all of this happened on Sunday. And then the questioning was Sunday night. And Omaima ended up telling them that the human remains were of a person Bill had killed. And, you know, but he's not here right now. He's away on business in Florida. Of all states, she could have picked Florida, really. Super Anyways. fine scenes. Bloody fine scenes. <laughs> we know that too, all too well. Our bo- Check out our bonus episodes. Oh, <laughs> right. So yeah. anyway, so she was like, yeah, Bill killed this person. And then he had to go away on business. And, you know, I don't know really why he put all these body parts in here, but it was Bill. Did I mention Bill did it? But I said Bill did it, right? It wasn't me, Bill. Bill did it, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So she stayed and answered all, answered all of the police's questions, but the police weren't really satisfied with her answers. Why? Because they were very inconsistent. So the cops, being cops and they're not morons, 
decided to get a search warrant for her apartment. And so inside the apartment, they found newspaper wrapped pieces of meat in the fridge, a large the fridge, crazy not the freezer. Why not in the fridge? It? A wow. large, a crazy amount of blood on the bedroom mattress. <laughs> and did you oh. just eat shark? Because wait for this one. And a skinned human torso hanging from some clothes hangers in the bathroom. Because I mean, from the what clothes better hanger, it was skin. From clothes hanging hangers in the bathroom. The whole torso. Wow, mm-hmm. that takes some, that takes precision and skill, Kai. That's what I'm trying to picture here. How do you do that? I mean, seriously, she grew up very poor, so she probably had to kill her own animals, like chickens yeah, or whatever the they fix of the tray. So, yes. Yeah. So she has experience mm-hmm. in doing that. Exactly. So then <laughs> the story of Bill being away on business trip in Florida didn't actually hold up. Why oh, you asked yeah. Sean? I'm waiting. Why? Yeah, yeah. Why? Because, Shar, and very thank you so much for asking, they found Bill's head wrapped in aluminum foil. (laughs) (laughs) She could have used saran wrap. Why she use aluminum foil? I mean, Um, I mean, aluminum foil stays together better than saran wrap. You know, saran wrap could get all sticky. So when you're wrapping it around the head, it could stick to itself. And then you actually, 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 no, 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 no. There are plenty of cases where saran wrap, of course, in a larger form, was used to cover the stench of a, of a freshly dead body. That's what it does. Because you, because it, it's, it's, I mean, not that foil is breathable, it's not, but saran wrap tends to work because it holds in the air and it holds, it, it works, it, it just, it does the job, okay? So I'm really surprised. Well, thinking, I mean... You're not in her. Not, uh, it wasn't a cremation involved. Then I could see foil. But I mean, like to keep the the stench out. In her defense, she probably didn't have a chance yet to go to the store, and maybe they just had that. You know how when you're doing the saran wrap and you have just that little corner left, oh, that little corner. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. So she probably had that little corner. She was just taking it out. Like, yeah, I'm gonna saran wrap this head. Oh shit. Damn I it! Out. I ran out. I'm going to have to just get all Reynolds on this one. Yeah. Yeah. I told that muff to go to the store yesterday. You see? You see why I had? Okay. Never mind. You are having a flashback? <laughs> I hope not. Oh my god! You'll be yet oh, another what? episode within yourself. Are you crazy? Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so anyways, yeah, it was wrapped in aluminum foil. And in a quote from the senior deputy district attorney, good Lord, the senior deputy deputy district attorney in Orange County, California, and his name is Randolph J. Pawlowski, Pawlowski. So this is his quote, quote, there were suitcases and plastic bags soaked with dark liquid from his body parts. And in the fry cooker, there sat Mr. Nelson's hands. And when we opened the refrigerator, there was Mr. Nelson's head with stab wounds. Yeah. I wonder why she chose to cook the hands opposed to the head. What do you think the meatiest part would be? Oh, well. I would say like the thighs or something or the legs. I'm I'm glad you asked. You're welcome. You're quite welcome. I will tell you. So his face had burns that made police think it had been thrown in a vat of boiling oil. And when they looked inside the deep fryer, that's when they found the two human hands mixed in with turkey bit. But, Mm. yeah, but a lot of Bill's body was still missing. How much of it do you ask? Well, about 130 pounds of it. So, of course, Omaima Nelson was arrested on December 2nd, 1991. Why did I take that long to say second? On December 2nd, 1991, on suspicion of murder. And her trial started one year, almost to the date later. Her trial started on December 1st, 1992. And then, girl, this is when the whole story comes out. So, Omaima maintains, she still says, that Bill was very, no, that Bill was very abusive towards her. So she said, as I said before, that he consistently raped her and that he pimped her out to creepy old men to pay for their rent, uh, to pay their bills and to get food and stuff. Um, She says he was into BDSM and he always bound her against against her will and raped her. So this is what she's saying about Bill. 
on Thursday, November 28th, 1991, which was Thanksgiving Day of that year, 